And welcome to Nancy's Neighborhood, folks. And it's great to be with you today because it's a beautiful day in Nancy's Neighborhood. No rain. The sun is shining. It is a little crisp out there because I think our highs low 50s today, but that's okay because it's not spring until Wednesday. So, uh, and it's Wednesday afternoon. So we're doing okay. And of course, it's not Easter yet. So we're still going to have some weather that may be more winter than spring. But it's a great day in Nancy's neighborhood. And I'm so excited to have, and I'm, I will not pronounce this last name right, and I've practiced, Jerry Eppinga. That's right. Oh, I did get it. You Jerry got it exactly right. And Phyllis Tilden with me. And uh, they're going to talk to us today about the Master Garden Program, Master, Master Gardener Program. And it's one of those programs that I've always been interested in, but I've never had time to do. So, because it's a requirement. I mean, it, you have to say, I would like to do this, and then you have to say, I can do it. And That's things right. slip up on my calendar. So, ladies, welcome <laughs> today. And both of you are master gardeners. Yes. And I think that is awesome. So explain to our, to our listeners a little bit about what constitutes a master gardener. Well, the master gardener, uh, the Bradley County Master Gardener Program began in about uh, 2012, I think. Oh, okay. I think it's fairly officially new. Fairly when new. the actual organization was started. Okay. We're part of the uh, University of Tennessee Extension. And we try for that not to be the best kept secret in Bradley County. But so many people don't know what the UT Extension Service does and what they offer. Well, the, probably the most well-known service of the Extension is 4-H. Yes. So that's the one everybody knows. Yes. But there are a lot of, um, there are a lot of other programs that are serving the, the people of Bradley mm -hmm. County. And then the Agriculture Extension, which is what the Bradley County Master Gardeners Program is a part of, is relating to... It could be farming, it can be, you know, cows, pigs, horses, plants, you name it. And, you know, it's, it's going to be about all of that part of, uh, of the county. So the, the Master Gardeners started formally in 2012 and formed their group. And there are, um, I would say, at least 40 or 50 Master Gardener programs throughout the state of Tennessee. Oh, okay. Yeah. And this all falls under the UT Extension it, yes, okay. under the UT Extension. And uh, what we do is our mission is to educate the citizens of Bradley County. The, that's the Bradley County one. And every county or wherever it is, they're going to be serving that county. But then we also meet together and, you know, so there is some, um, you know, association over the whole state. But we, um, to become a Master Gardener. Yes, which you would like to do, and we would love to have you whenever you're ready to commit yourself to it. Maybe when I retire. <laughs> <laughs> We're in the middle of a class right now, okay. and it's a, usually about 16 weeks, and um, it's once a week. You come in the evenings for about three hours, and we have speakers. We have snacks, which everybody looks forward to. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but mainly we have speakers that teach us about gardening, starting with soil and... Um, ending it with lawns and flowers and trees and pruning and how to grow just about anything you can think of. We talked a lot about pollinators and native yeah. plants. Right. And oh, herbs. native plants. Okay, because yeah. I, I, that's something I'm extremely personally interested in is the native plants because we have a lot of those in Tennessee, mm -hmm. in East Tennessee. That's right. And actually, we had a program last week. Johnny Arnett taught about native plants and... Linda Merritt taught about the pollinators, about the bees and the butterflies. So that was our, um, our teaching program last week. And um, any adult can be a part of our class, and uh, there is a, a fee for that. It's $150, and half of that is for a wonderful book that you get. Oh, okay. From about UT. that thick. <laughs> it's a very thick book. That tells about soils and plants. Yes. And, and, oh, yeah, wow. It is okay. a reference from okay. A to Z. That's okay. right. And um, then um, the other part of it is just, you know, for the program that supplies and everything else that we do. But um, it's, it's a great program. I actually started in Virginia, and when I moved here, uh, I became a master gardener here in Bradley County. And if you do come from another area, you find out very quickly that 
uh, the soil in Bradley County is much different from the soil in Virginia or the soil in Florida. Yes. So that's a lot of it is learning about your own uh, yard. Mm -hmm. We encourage people to get a soil test and everybody in our class does get a soil test done uh, in their uh, yard to find mm -hmm. out what's the best way to uh, deal with what they have in their yard, if, whether you're interested in a beautiful lawn or whether you're interested in just having uh, flowers or if you want to have vegetables, if you want to learn how to build a, a, a raised bed to plant your vegetables or, you know. And one of the greatest things about becoming a master gardener, not only do you get all the information, which of course you never remember all of it, <laughs> but, but you have, have the build, resources build now. Yes. You not just have a book and a reference, mm -hmm. but you have you know 40 other master gardeners and everybody has a little specialty. And you have resources all around the state because we meet people you know, as we That's go out right. and about having our classes. So we know who to call to ask questions. Okay, so as a master gardener, can you all do soil samples or someone has to do those for you? No, we, uh, you, can, you can pick up um, something to do a soil test with okay. at the extension. Okay. And then it gets sent to Tennessee, to the U University okay. of Tennessee. Okay. And their labs up there do that and then they send you back uh, the information about what you need. Let's say you uh, had a 10 by 10 plot that you wanted to plant vegetables in. You would take some samples of that soil and put it in this little box and send them a Jack and uh, the, and what kind of information, what you wanted to plant okay. in there. Then they send you back the information about uh, whether your soil needs this or that. Or whether or not your soil will even work for whatever you Or if your you want. soil right. will, it'll always work for you. You just might have to doctor it a little bit. Yeah. So. Okay. Well, I have eight raised beds. Up, I call it up on top of the hill. Um, actually, in front of my house, but my driveway separates my house from that property. Uh, and I just hadn't, I, I'm not a vegetable grower. So I hadn't figured out what I want to do with them yet. But I'd, I'd really like to do something perennial that once I put it in there, then maybe I just have to weed a little and, and it'll come back every year and I don't have to go back and plant it. Uh, you know, I love, I love some of these. I love pansies, but those are annuals. I love yeah. some of the petunias, but they're annuals. And so, you know, that's something I'd kind of like to do is put something in those raised boxes. But they were done by my late husband for vegetables, but I don't eat vegetables, so there's no need in me. <laughs> planting a whole <laughs> well, lot of vegetables. Well, I'm allergic to tomatoes and I don't like cucumbers, so okay, what are you going to do? So so, uh, so I probably need to come take well, these classes. Well, you know, you don't have to do it all at once. You don't have to do oh, all eight beds at the same thank time. You. Thank you. you are you do, sure? <laughs> yes, I'm totally sure. Just pick one bed and just go to wherever they have plants that you want to purchase your plants or seeds and do just one bed. Mm -hmm. And I think they're four by eight beds. So, uh, so anyway, they're they're really nice beds. And and I've said to friends, if anybody wants to do uh, vegetables, you're welcome to plant them there. And they said, well, will you come steal the vegetables? And I said, no, I <laughs> will not require you to give me any vegetables if you yeah. grow them there. So, but I, to me, this is terribly fascinating because I grew up in McMinn County, on what had one, at one time been property of the Keith Plantation during the Civil War. So it was red chert. I mean, it was brick. That's what they made yeah, the bricks out of. I think we've of. seen some of that. And, and you can't grow anything in that. Well, that's one reason you can use raised beds because you can take a raised bed and put it on uh, something like that and fill it up with all kinds of good dirt and compost and whatever you want to put in there. and just grow things on top of that. Yeah. And that's great, I think. I, I really do. So now, okay, so now y'all are master gardeners. Do you teach classes yourself or? We do. Okay, so. We do. We, and one of the things that we do quite a bit of and that uh, some of your uh, viewers may have seen us at the different uh, fairs and uh, like the, the Cowpea Festival where oh, okay. we come every year. We bring our master gardener booth and uh, we answer questions, um, talk to people about becoming a master gardener if they have a question about mm -hmm. um, something like you're asking right now. We can talk to them about that and give out information. Um, contact information mm -hmm. so they know yeah. who they can contact. Yeah. Now, if I, if I said to you, Jerry, what's your expertise? 
mine. Mm -hmm. Right now, it's running, <laughs> running our uh, spring garden festival. Which, that's coming which we're going to talk about. But okay, Phyllis, what's your expertise? I don't know that I would say I was an expert in much of anything. Oh, but okay. My vital interest is probably na in the native plant area. And I think those are and awesome. vegetables. Okay, now we talk native plants, and people don't seem to understand. But sometimes you go out in the woods, or you. I know going home, I pass a large acreage that has may apples. Mm -hmm. I mean, the whole under the trees is just may apples. Now, that's a native plant. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I hear people all the time talk about flags. And I think they're talking about iris and things, things that have those, oh. those, I mean, I think that's a colloquialism from Appalachia, that they're flags. But I, but there's some of those that are native, right? Flags. But, yes, but they, there are some of those that are native, and then there's, there's all. Help me, tell well, me. Well, the some. blue, the blue iris is a Tennessee yes. state flower. Yes. So yes. if they're considering that a flag, a flag. Yeah, and, I'm not and familiar I don't with know, that. Term. Well, but yeah. I don't know what that term and, is. And I've I, never heard and it. And I had, I heard that from my late husband. He used to say, "Oh, there are flags coming up over there," and I'd say, "But," and he was talking about iris. Stop. I mean, you know, how those leaves are the iris. Okay, so what are some more native plants that people may just pass on the road and not even realize they're looking at? Oh, gosh, you'll see Joe Pie weed all over the place. Okay. They um, come up in the fall. New uh, England, tall. New England asters. Oh, um, asters. Lots of native grasses, lots of asters, actually. And what, color, native asters. what color are those asters? Uh, I mean, you can get a variety of colors. Oh, the really? New England are blue. kind of purpley blue. They're beautiful. Okay, if I'm passing them on the side of the road, might I mistake them for bachelor buttons? No. No, I wouldn't. No, okay. the asters are huge. Or, well, I'm New England asters are very large, tall okay. plants. Okay. But the little mm -hmm. asters here, the little some asters of them are real summer. tiny, mm -hmm. okay. like about the size of a dime, maybe. But there's also uh, cone flowers and okay. cone flowers. milkweed and and milkweed is very, very important because it provides the, the host plant for the monarch caterpillar. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. And see, these are some things that people need to know. Some of these are not weeds. You don't need to be <laughs> chopping these down. But sometimes they look like weeds. And if you can't identify, now if it's got a flower on it, I know I'm not supposed to chop right. it down. Right. But not everything has flower on it. That's true. So, so there we go. So, and then there's there's these little purple violets that come up sometimes in yards that it's. They're coming up now. Okay. Those are the grape mm -hmm. hyacinths, I think, but they are not native. I don't think. Oh, okay. Well, now these these aren't. These are just like ground cover. Are, are we you talking about the flocks? No. It comes like on the no, banks and things like no, that. No, I have I have in my backyard, which happens to butt up on the Hawassi River. It, it's kind of like they just, they come up and, and it's just, it's like a ground cover, but it's it's not anything I've planted or anything that's ever been planted, but it's just little tiny, they look like violets. Maybe bluets, but yeah, okay. it's, hard, it's hard to there's, know. And there's so many seeing, things yeah, coming up. so many things. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and this is spring, Lots so, so it's kind of busting right out all over us, isn't it? Yes. Because, it and is. we need to be aware, but, but you were talking about butterflies and bees, so mm -hmm. we need to be sure we don't destroy some of these native plants and some of these things that are conducive for our butterflies and bees, like the milkweed for the monarch butterfly. Mm -hmm. um, we need to be sure we don't destroy these things. That's right, for but sure. We, but we need to know what they are. Well, <laughs> uh, and for one, the reason you don't want to destroy them is, and the reason that you want to plant flowers, like you want to plant in your garden native, uh, native flowers, we need those for the um, the bees and the butterflies and other insects to get the pollen off mm -hmm. of them mm -hmm. and carry the pollen here and there and do what they're supposed to do to, um, you know, to pollinate the vegetables so that we have food when we go to the grocery store right. or the market or whatever to eat. And it's so important that we keep the, the, the bee population going because they pollinate and everything that we need there. so right. yeah and it's not only bees though that pollinate because people I think a lot of people think only the bees and maybe the butterflies do it but also beetles and um, spiders and it really anything that's flying around your garden can be a pollinator it could be you know swishing the plants around so that it's blowing in the wind or they can carry it on their wings or their feet or it's not only the bees that are pollinators. Okay and that's good to know too because I really hadn't thought about that. I just no. knew I, I had always tried to be protective of bees and I have a bush 
in my side yard called a butterfly bush. Mm, yes, I love and, those. Okay, so that really is, I mean, that's something that attracts butterflies. It attracts butterflies and all kinds of other things. Okay. So it won't be only butterflies on it. Okay. But they do love that. It's a it's a pretty it's a pretty little bush. Yeah. And Alex is saying we need to take a commercial break because we're going to come back and talk about an event that y'all are going to have that's going to be telling everybody and showing everybody what we've talked about. So folks, don't go away. We're going to take a little commercial break. Watch our commercials. Support our sponsors because they pay our bills. And the gals and I'll be right back with some. Uh, information about someplace you can go on March the 30th to actually see and learn more about what we we're talking about. So don't go away. We'll be right back.